Welcome back. Unfortunately, we're back with some not so good news. All right. I'm going to level with you. Bernie might not win the 2016 election. <laughs> For the US presidency, that is. Next week, everyone fav everyone's favorite Ben and Jerry salesman is running to be the next Santa Claus. <laughs> That's right. The friendly grandpa meme lord has realized what is truly important to the world, the magic of giving. <laughs> Now, I don't know if everyone knows this, but apparently Bernie Sanders supports socialism. <laughs> now think about it, guys. Who is the most socialist figure of all time? Jesus. Besides Jesus. <laughs> That's right. It's Santa Claus. <clears throat> now, there's always been frequent backlash against Santa Claus from the right. Republicans believe that giving free handouts to all families, regardless of social class, is against capitalist economics. <laughs> Notoriously hangry, Fox News host Tucker Carlson once said that Santa Claus was the biggest frickin' cuck in American history. <laughs> Regardless, Bernie still has his eyes set for the fat man's seat in power. Now, this isn't going to be easy. Bernie is running against a fearsome opponent, Hermes, official messenger of the Greek gods. <laughs> Hermes claims he can do the job of Santa Claus in half the time it's been done in the past, and he's not bluffing. Hermes' famous winged sandals can help him travel twice as fast as even a full sled of reindeer. Hermes was quoted as saying, Let that old man try. Everyone knows that Greek gods are totally in right now. I doubt he can slide down the chimney faster than I can. <laughs> Bernie plans to run a no-nonsense platform for the Santa Clausery. No more frills and fluff brought to us about by capitalism. Bernie plans to give every child their very own Vladimir Lenin action figure. <laughs> and sure, Hermes can do everything quicker, but he won't be able to give us our favorite dank memes. Thank you. This has been a very special segment of How Bernie Could Still Win. All right. <laughs> now, you've heard of Dancer, Dasher, Prancer, Vixen, Clinton. <laughs> Comet, Cupid, Dahmer, and Blitzen, but <laughs> have you heard of Vladimir? Yes, Vladimir the Reindeer is frequently forgotten in the history of Christmas. Some suspect this is because he doesn't do a good a job as the other reindeer. Is this true? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, Vladimir the Reindeer. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's great to be here on such big American network, CNN. Wait, wait. <laughs> well, what, you think this is CNN? Yes, my agent said I would be on big fake news network. That is CNN, no? <laughs> n n we're, we're much better than CNN. OK, OK, I am excited. So, Vladimir, there have been rumors circulating regarding your job performance. Rumors? Who is source? I swear if that red-nosed scum sold me out, I will end him. He will be cut out, just like Russia was cut out of Olympics for doping. Uh, are you talking about Rudolph? Nobody likes Rudolph. He cannot pull sled fast because he does not like dope like other reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you do dope? Ethan, I am Russian. Of course I dope. Doping is Russian tradition. We eat dope, work dope, sleep dope, dope dope, and then win <laughs> Olympics. OK, OK, OK. Can you tell us about your job? You mean sled grunt job? Yes, I pull sled. Um, do you have a good relationship with your coworkers? My coworkers are capitalist dogs. They post sled, deliver meaningless material goods to bourgeoisie children. In home country, Russian Santa gives nothing but hot borscht to grateful children. No meat, only potatoes. <laughs> so you've got two jobs. Da, my true passion is working for Russian Santa. There is plenty of hot borscht in break room. I work for capitalist Santa part time for extra money to feed family. Oh, so you've got a family. Yes, Vladimir has beautiful Soviet wife and six children, all named Boris. <laughs> Does your family life ever interfere with your work? Yes, I take six breaks a day to go home and give bread to children. Each break, I give one child one loaf. Wait, couldn't you just make one trip home and then give them all six loaves of bread. Do I look like I am made of bread, newsman? I go to work. I take break. I eat hot borscht, no meat, only potatoes. I go to Breadline, I get bread, I go home, I give bread to Boris, then I go back to work. OK, and you do that six times every work day. Yes, Breadline's rules are very clear. Only one loaf bread per person. OK, all right, so how much time do you spend at work amidst all these breaks? 
I forget the English word. I think it is uh, ten. Oh, ten hours. All right, that's not bad. Yes, ten Russian hours. <laughs> uh, is there a difference between Russian hours and American hours? Uh, yes, Russian hour is equivalent to how you say one American minute. Wait, 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 wait. You, go to, you go to work for ten minutes a day. Yes, it's only bad part-time job. Borsten break room is always cold and has no potatoes. <laughs> if you hate the job so much, why don't you just quit? You think Vladimir can feed six children with no job? You're a crazy newsman. And I will always have job because American Santa cannot fire me. Okay, and why is that? Let's just say Vladimir has footage of fat man with a woman who is not Mrs. Claus. If American Santa fires Vladimir, his secret will be out. Okay, well, the secret's safe here. <laughs> I don't think anyone's watching. <laughs> uh, well, Vladimir, is there anything else you'd like to say? Oh, yes. I will say hi to my children. Hello, Boris. Hello, Boris. <laughs> Boris, hello. Hello, Boris. And Boris, hello. Wait, that was... Don't you have six children? I do not love Boris Six. He is disgraced to father. His forced is always called no potatoes. <laughs> and my beautiful wife, Anastasia. She's not named Boris? Oh, yes, she is named Boris. Anastasia's only nickname, silly capitalist newsman. I would like to give you something. Is gift from Vladimir. It is Christmas time after all. Oh, Vladimir, thanks so much. I it is mug of hot borscht. No meat, only potatoes. Oh, uh, okay. Do not cry, newsman. I have one more thing for you. Oh, great. Okay, what is it? What is it? Lyme disease. What? I am reindeer after all. Whoa. What? No, please. Hey, hey, come back here. I have Lyme disease. All right, uh, let's check back in with the gingerbread houses. Hello. <laughs> we are doing great. We overcame our differences and we found the true meaning of Christmas. And together, we completed our gingerbread house. <laughs> In fact, we even wrote a little song about it. Yeah. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the tinsel in my heart. Jesus, 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 Christmas with you, Santa Claus, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Wow, I'm really glad that they were able to um, mend their differences, I guess. So, lastly tonight, on this very holiday-themed season finale, we, and Next Week Now, would like to bring out the talented and dedicated staff of our show to explore what kind of predictions they can bring forth for their own winter breaks. Please, join me. Hey there, Keegan. Hi. Um, this Christmas, I'm going to Charlie my brown. <laughs> Wait. What does that mean? Wait. Silent. Hey, Nick. How's it going? Instead of Christmas this year, I want Columbus Day 2. Whoa, whoa. But the first one wasn't that good. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hi. For Christmas, I'm going to get my fourth circumcision. <laughs> well, how much is left? For Christmas, I'm going to bake cookies for Jesus, but then eat them until he gets them all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. Hey there, my little Anoki mushroom. Hey, Ethan. Uh, this Christmas, I'm going to find Clifford the big red dog, and I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Why? Why? But he doesn't, what if he's not real? Oh, hey, James. How's it going? Hi. This Christmas, I'm going to invent a slip and slide made out of sandpaper called the grit and slide, <laughs> or the slip and die. I, I don't like that idea. Please don't market it. Hey, 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 host. Host. hey, next. I mean, what we missed. That's, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm doing this Christmas? What? I'm gonna show the whole world the meaning of Christmas. How are you gonna do that? The meaning of Christmas is the name of my butt. Uh, oh, 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 oh! Thank you. Thanks for that. Hey, 
Hey there, Tess. Hi. The Yeti uprising is coming and no one can stop it. Okay, thanks for telling me. <laughs> hey there, Eric, how's it going? It's going good. This Christmas, I'm gonna knit scarves with my dead grandmother. Uh, wait, do you mean out of your dead grandmother? Oh, uh, I'm still, uh, hey Jill, how's it? Uh, <sighs> oh, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> okay. Hey there, Stacia. I mean, Micah. Hello. How's it going? This Christmas, I'm going to cancel next week now. <laughs> wait, wait. Wait, you can't, you can't do that. Just kidding. No. Oh. I'm going to bathe in a vat of Easy Mac. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all right. Thank you. Bye. Hey there. How's it going, Brooke? Hi. Um, this Christmas, I'm going to send Harvey Weinstein my nudes. Oh, no, please. That's not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> That's it for this season, folks. Our final prediction is that you'll have a wonderful winter break with loved ones, and in a month or two, you'll find yourself watching our season three premiere. I'm Ethan Yoon. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays and good night. <laughs>